As the public finally becomes outraged over the NSA's illegal spying, members of government and the corporate media wage an information war to misdirect that anger to issues of less importance. To counteract this, a bold new citizen-led initiative to nullify the NSA is now gaining momentum around the United States. This is the GRTV Backgrounder on Global Research TV. One of the less remembered parts of the Osama bin Laden fairy tale was that the NSA had a hard time keeping track of his communications with his al Qaeda operatives. Why? Because, as General Michael Hayden told CBS News back in early 2001, bin Laden used standard encryption and off-the-shelf American telecommunication products. In the wake of the attacks, Osama bin Laden has emerged as the prime suspect. Bin Laden has long been one of NSA's main targets, but Hayden says he's a hard man to keep track of because he has access to the latest and best communications equipment made right here in the U.S. and available to anyone who can afford it. I can't comment specifically on who's doing what, mm -hmm. uh, but, but I can say uh, that people who would do harm to us are using encrypted products and services. But I think people have a hard time understanding why if during the Cold War you could stay either even or a step ahead of the big bad Soviet Union with all of its might, why you can't stay a step ahead of Osama bin Laden? Several reasons. One is the Soviet Union for its telecommunications had to rely on those things the Soviet Union built. Osama bin Laden has at his disposal the wealth of a $3 trillion a year telecommunications industry that he can rely on. He has better technology? That's one. He has better technology available to him. I can't get into operational details about what it is we know or don't know about him. It requires more on your part, and you're behind the curve. We're behind the curve in keeping up with the global telecommunications revolution. Yes, we are. And that's the challenge we have. Sound unbelievable? That's because it is. As they go on to admit in that very same report, they were tracking bin Laden's satellite phone after all, and as James Bamford and others have described it in exhaustive detail, the NSA was monitoring al-Qaeda's communications hub in Yemen for years prior to 9-11, and purposefully withholding most of that information from the CIA bin Laden unit. But the idea that the NSA just wasn't able to track bin Laden because of his dastardly technology was a key meme for the NSA to implant in the immediate wake of 9-11. That's why the Hayden interview was replayed on CBS less than 48 hours after the attacks, and that's why, as recently declassified documents show, the NSA used 9-11 as an official talking point to justify their illegal surveillance of Americans. This meme, of course, was a lie. As NSA insiders have pointed out for years, most, if not all, of the current illegal collections programs began before 9-11, but the false flag events of September 11th provided the perfect justification for the revelation and expansion of those programs. I would hear the following phrase, which I think one person in particular probably had regrets ever saying more publicly, that 9-11 was a gift NSA. <laughs> a gift. Now, over a decade later, that meme is paying off. Just two weeks after a federal district court judge ruled the NSA's collection of telephone metadata unconstitutional, a different district court judge ruled it constitutional. In his particularly florid ruling, U.S. District Court Judge William Pauley wrote, The September 11th terrorist attacks revealed, in the starkest terms, just how dangerous and interconnected the world is. While Americans depended on technology for the convenience of modernity, Al-Qaeda plotted in a 7th century milieu to use that technology against us. It was a bold jujitsu, And it succeeded because conventional intelligence gathering could not detect diffuse filaments connecting Al-Qaeda. No matter if it bears any resemblance to reality, the meme has been planted and the courts are going along with it. It is now official lore that the NSA needs to spy on everyone's phone metadata to prevent the next 9-11 from taking place. Of course, that's not the only lie in this story. The even bigger lie that is being propounded now is that the national conversation and the court cases are still revolving around the false notion that NSA phone spying is somehow limited to metadata, as if all the NSA is collecting are lists of phone numbers and call durations. We have suspected for years that phone calls were being recorded and stored wholesale, but that was actually confirmed by Tim Clemente, a former FBI counterterrorism agent who casually let it slip on Aaron Burnett's CNN program in May that U.S. intelligence agencies have access to complete phone conversations whenever they want in the name of national security.
Now, obviously, it was a voicemail. They could they could try to get the the phone companies to give that up at this point. But if it's not a voicemail, it's just a conversation. There's no way they actually can find out what happened, right? Unless she tells them. No, there is a way. They, we certainly have ways in, in national security investigations to find out exactly what was said in that conversation. Um, it's not necessarily something that the FBI is going to want to present in court, but it may help lead the investigation and or lead the questioning of her. So somewhere so we can it's certainly being find digitized or they can actually get that. Because everyone, people were saying, look, yeah, that wouldn't be well, possible. Yes. It's pretty incredible what you're saying. No, welcome welcome to America. The uh, there, All of that stuff is being captured as we speak, whether we know it or like it or not. Although this caused a buzz at the time and was picked up by numerous publications, it was soon covered over by the Snowden story, which once again focused people's attention on metadata. One person who did not gloss over it, however, was Russ Tice. He is a former NSA employee who became a whistleblower almost a decade ago as one of the sources for the initial New York Times story exposing the illegal NSA wiretapping program. When he heard Clemente's interview, he immediately contacted his ex-NSA friends and discussed whether the NSA was already recording every phone conversation they could intercept and storing them at their new Utah data center. The ex-NSA gathering's consensus? This was exactly what the NSA was doing. As a result, Tice decided to go further than ever before about what he knew regarding illegal NSA activities. In a series of interviews on BoilingFrogsPost.com, The Corbett Report, and other media venues, Tice revealed that during his time as an NSA employee, he had personally handled the eavesdropping orders to monitor the communications of high-ranking judges, congressmen, and military officials, presumably for the purposes of blackmail. Initially what I saw was uh, they were targeting news organizations, they were targeting targeting U.S. companies that did international business, they were uh, looking at financial institutions, but they were also going after... um, the State Department and uh, Secretary of State Colin Powell at the time, and they were going after high-ranking military generals, and that was just with my space capabilities that I saw. Now later, when I got together with colleagues, and we started to put together the terrestrial side, that's the side that is being done with all those nodes all over the country with the fiber optics and that sort of thing, then we found out that it got much worse. because, And this was just the phone that we were looking at, but it was also being done at the email level, but but that wasn't the information I was getting. The information I was seeing were phone numbers that were being plugged into a system that was going after uh, people's phone uh, phone numbers and associated numbers, and a lot of a lot of numbers I wasn't even sure. But they went after they went after law firms and lawyers. They went after. Um, more generals. Uh, General Petraeus was one of the guys. It seemed like right about that three-star level was they were going after admirals and generals. They went after the Supreme Court, of which I held uh, Judge Alito's paperwork in my hand, numbers associated with Judge Alito that someone had put into the system that NSA used to spy on Judge Alito. And let's just break this down a little bit because these are explosive allegations right now that I have not heard anyone talk about before, that there are actually orders that you personally saw in your hands to wiretap Judge Alito, high-ranking intelligence officers, David Petraeus, Barack Obama. Wannabe Senator Barack Obama. At that time, he wasn't even a senator. He, he um, had won his primary in Illinois. And I think maybe the catalyst, and I don't, I'm not sure, was the fact that he had just done a big speech at the Democratic uh, Convention. Now, now I, I was at that time a lifelong Republican. I didn't even watch the Democratic Re- Convention. So at the time, it, you know, the significance of it really didn't hit me until later. I mean, I did look up, well, who's this guy, Barack Obama? Well, okay, he made a speech, blah, blah, blah. But then, of course, later, things you know, started to you know, come into play that this is our future president of the United States. And once again, these shocking revelations are being spun away into theory and hearsay. This time, it's Senator Bernie Sanders lobbing the softball at the NSA as he sends them a letter politely asking whether the NSA is spying on Congress. Senator Sanders did not ask about the wiretapping of communications that Tice has already exposed, however, but merely whether or not the NSA metadata spying extends to members of Congress. Once again, the real scandal is papered over by milquetoast non-confrontation by the bought and paid for Congress that have been perfectly content to let this happen for years now. The entire NSA fiasco is stage-managed theatrics from start to finish, a carefully choreographed stage show with full cooperation from the corporate media that is only too willing to play along and misdirect the national conversation to areas of little or no importance. Meanwhile, in reality, 
the only question worth discussing is how to abolish the NSA entirely. Since this is not a question that is on the table politically, it is up to the public to find alternative ways of shutting down the NSA. Luckily, there is at least one innovative project happening that proposes to do just that. Fact. The new NSA data center in Utah requires 1.7 million gallons of water every single day to operate. Billions of Fourth Amendment violations need massive computers and the water to cool them. That water is being supplied by the state of Utah. Fact. There's absolutely nothing in the Constitution which requires your state to help the feds violate your rights. Our message to Utah? Turn it off. Well, in the broadest sense, the Off Now campaign is a state and local initiative to push back against NSA spying. We do not have any faith in Congress or the president or the federal courts to actually do anything to rein in the NSA spy machine. Uh, They may pretend like they do. They may pass some bills, but they're not really going to do anything that's going to be of any use. So we've decided we need to take a different approach. We want to harness the power of our state and local governments to create obstructions and make it as difficult as we can for the NSA to continue this unconstitutional and and immoral spying on virtually everybody in the world. And so one of the main aspects of the campaign, probably the central aspect right now, is the Fourth Amendment Protection Act. And it's a piece of legislation that we are introducing at the state level. And essentially it does four things. I'll run through them really quick in in a bullet-pointed way to make things easy to understand. The first thing it does is it denies material support from the state to the NSA. So essentially anything that the NSA gets from the state, they won't get it anymore. And this could be very significant in some places. For instance, Utah, they use 1.7 million gallons of water a day to cool their spy computers in the uh, Bluffdale Data Center. That water is actually supplied by a utility that's owned by the city of Bluffdale, which is a subdivision of the state of Utah. With this bill, it will make it possible to take steps to turn that water off and force the NSA to find water someplace else. So this can be extremely significant in states that actually have NSA facilities. We'd also deal with public utilities that supply electricity and things that we probably haven't even imagined yet. The second thing it does, and I really think this is the most significant part of the bill, at least in the short term, is that it prohibits any data that has been gathered by the NSA without a warrant that is shared with state and local law enforcement. It makes it inadmissible in state courts. We know that the NSA is sharing this data. We know that very little of it actually has anything to do with quote unquote national security. It's for basic law enforcement purposes. So this would basically say, you can share this data all you want to, but it's going to be useless to state and local law enforcement in court. And it will kind of take that dagger out of the heart of the Fourth Amendment that this kind of information sharing shoves in there. A third aspect that it does is we have 166 universities in the United States that have partnerships with the NSA. They call them Centers for Academic Excellence, which I think is a a nice Orwellian term suitable for this uh, particular subject. This bill would deal with state and public universities and force them to leave these relationships and keep any other state universities from entering into them. And then finally, it deals with corporations that do business with the NSA. And essentially, it's a disincentive to these corporations. Basically, the bill says, Corporation XYZ, if you're going to do business with the NSA, then we're going to prohibit you from having any state or local contracts and take that business away from you. So hopefully, it will create some disincentive. So this is the basic gist of the, uh, the legislation that we're working to get passed. Those who are interested in finding out how they can help to turn the taps off on the NSA, literally, are encouraged to explore the Nullify NSA hashtag on Twitter and the campaign website at offnow.org. For more on this story and other breaking news and current events, please go to globalresearch.ca. For more research and analysis by James Corbett, please go to corbettreport.com. The Center for Research on Globalization depends on your support. To purchase a book or DVD, or to make a donation, please visit globalresearch.ca today.